Welcome back to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we will dig in deeper with tensors and introduce three fundamental tensor attributes, rank, axes, and shape. Without further ado, let's get started. The rank, axes, and shape are three tensor attributes that concern us most when starting out with tensors in deep learning. These concepts build on one another, starting with rank, then axes, and building up to shape. So keep an eye out for this relationship between these three. Together, rank, axes, and shape are all fundamentally connected to the concept of indices. We discussed indices in the previous video in the Neural Network Programming series. If you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend you check it out. Let's kick things off starting at the ground floor by introducing the rank of a tensor. The rank of a tensor refers to the number of dimensions present within the tensor. Suppose that we are told that we have a rank 2 tensor. This means all of the following. We have a matrix. We have a 2D array. We have a 2D tensor. Let's think now about what the rank tells us. What information does the rank reveal? This is where indices come into play. The rank of a tensor tells us how many indices are required to access or refer to a specific data element contained within the tensor data structure. If we are told we have a rank two tensor, for example, we know that we need two indices to access an individual element of the tensor. Let's build on the concept of rank by looking at the axes of a tensor. An axis of a tensor is a specific dimension of a tensor. If we say that a tensor is a rank two tensor, we mean that the tensor has two dimensions or equivalently, we mean the tensor has two axes. Elements are said to exist or run along an axis. This running is constrained by the length of each axis. The length of each axis tells us how many indices are available along the axis. Suppose we have a tensor T, and we know that the first axis has a length of 3, while the second axis has a length of 4. Since the first axis has a length of 3, this means that we can index 3 positions along the first axis. All of these indices, 0 through 2, are valid, but we can't move past index 2 because the length of the first axis is only 3. And since the second axis has a length of 4, we can index 4 positions along the second axis. And this is possible for each index of the first axis. So for axis 2, we have the following. Let's look at some examples to make this solid. We'll consider the same tensor DD as before. Each element along the first axis is an array. And each element along the second axis is a number. With tensors, the elements of the last axis are always numbers. Every other axis will contain an n-dimensional array. This is what we see in this example, but this idea generalizes to any n-dimensional tensor. So the rank of a tensor tells us how many axes a tensor has, and the length of these axes leads us to the very important concept known as the shape of a tensor. The shape of a tensor is determined by the length of each axis. So if we know the shape of a given tensor, then we know the length of each axis. And this tells us how many indices are available along each axis. Let's consider the same tensor DD as before. To work with DD as a torch.tensor, we'll pass the DD Python list to the torch.tensor function to get a torch.tensor object. So now we see that our Python list has been turned into a torch tensor. And we can verify that checking the type. We see that we have a torch tensor. Now that we have a torch tensor, we can ask to see the shape of this tensor. And we see that the shape of this tensor is three by three. If you look at the output of t.shape, we have a torch.size object. And this is because in PyTorch, the size of a tensor and the shape of a tensor are the same thing. So again, we have multiple words for different concepts. Particularly in deep learning, like a whole lot of different areas have come together, like information theory, computer vision, statistics, signal processing, and you, you've ended up with this hodgepodge of nomenclature in deep learning. Often, like every version of 
things will be used. And really it's just like the same concept gets kind of somewhat independently invented in different fields, and eventually they find their way to machine learning, and then we don't know what to call them, so we call them all of the above. Something like that. The shape of 3 by 3 tells us that each axis of this rank 2 tensor has a length of 3, which means that we have three indices available along each axis. The shape also reveals a tensor's rank. The rank of a variable is equal to the length of its shape. The shape of a tensor is important for a few reasons. The first reason is because the shape allows us to conceptually think about or even visualize a tensor. Higher rank tensors become more abstract, and thus, the shape gives us something concrete to think about. The shape also encodes all of the relevant information about axes, rank, and therefore indices. One of the types of operations that we must perform frequently when we're programming neural networks is called reshaping. As our tensors flow through our networks, certain shapes are expected at different points inside the network. And as neural network programmers, it is our job to understand the incoming shape and have the ability to reshape as needed. So let's consider this idea of reshaping a tensor by recalling the list of terms we started with earlier. We had a plain list of terms, number, scalar, array, vector, 2D array, and matrix. This can be seen as a six by one list. Then we reshaped this list or regrouped to have a list of two items with three elements each. In the first group, we had number, array, and 2D array. And in the second group, we had scalar, vector, and matrix. Finally, we did another reshaping where we had three items with two terms in each group. We had number and scalar, array and vector, 2D array and matrix. Each of these groups of terms represent the same underlying data, only with differing shapes. This is just a little example to motivate the idea of reshaping. The important takeaway from this motivation is that the shape changes the grouping of the terms, but it does not change the underlying terms themselves. The data stays intact. Let's look briefly now at how we can reshape tensors in PyTorch. Let's suppose we want to reshape our tensor T to be of shape one by nine. This would give us one array along the first axis and nine numbers along the second axis. To do this, we can use the PyTorch reshape function. We just call reshape on the tensor T and we specify the length that we want for each axis. So we'll say that we want a length of one for the first axis and a length of nine for the second axis. Just run this code and we see that a tensor has been returned with a new shape. And just to verify the shape, we can see that indeed we have a tensor that has a shape one by nine. One thing I want you to notice about reshaping is that the product of the component values in the shape must equal the total number of elements in the tensor. For example, when we started the tensor was a three by three tensor. So three times three equals nine. After reshaping, we have a one by nine tensor. One times nine is equal to nine. This makes it so that there are enough positions inside the tensor data structure to contain all of the original elements after the reshaping. Reshaping changes the shape, but not the underlying data elements. This was just a light introduction to tensor reshaping. In a future video, we will cover this concept in much greater detail because it is a super important concept in neural network programming. Until then, let me just say congrats. You've made it into section two of the series. Your intelligence should be growing stronger by now. So intelligent. Don't forget about the blog post for this video on deeplizzard.com and the Deep Lizard Hive Mind where you can get exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks again for contributing to collective intelligence. I'll see you in the next one. The entire internet, everything that's built on top of it, deterministic software has all been based on this very simple model of computing. Mm -hmm. If this, then that. While, blah, you know, for, blah, blah, blah. That's how you write code today. We're now in the movement to machine learning. So code that changes itself constantly. The notion of an application is totally different. Uh, how you interact with the internet will be totally different. It's going to go all the way right back down to the physical chips. Uh, and we're going to completely rebuild the computing infrastructure. It is the most fundamentally monumental important shift.